All right, guys, so welcome back. So I'm printing out another uh, coil body. I put out a short saying that I was having a problem with the first layer on the FL Sun, the Delta style printer, versus my Ender 3V2, which prints out a beautiful first layer. And as I suspected, it was a leveling problem, and I got confirmation from a couple of people saying, yeah, it's probably a leveling issue. I re-leveled it, and it came out better. It's printing out beautiful now. But while I'm waiting for that, I set up a spool of, I think it's 23 gauge and 26 or 28 gauge wire, 25, I'm not sure. It's thin wire and thick wire. And I'm going to, yeah, I think this is 23 and this is 26. I'm going to try to wind a Bedini coil, you know, using the bifiler system. And I'm either going to do it on this smaller coil or I'm going to do it on this one <clears throat> or this bigger one. What I wanted to do was pre-wind the coils or twist, twist the wire. But I can't figure out an easy way to twist it. I was thinking about just dragging out a really long length you know, twist it with a um, <clears throat> a drill, but I can't figure out how much to pull out. So I think I'm not. I'm going to abandon the pre-twisted. Although I really want to do that, I may still try to do that. But I'm going to start out with this smaller coil. I'm also going to put in a iron core, but a air iron core I'll show you what that looks like later on you could probably figure it out but yeah let me get this started and then I want to go back out later on to the shop to show you my latest or to start building my latest ferris wheel rotor this one's going to have barrel magnets in it versus the one I currently have that has uh, the flat disc magnets. Anyway, stay tuned for this. All right, so the Bedini coil is coming out really nice. I'm doing it by hand, which I do now almost always, using some of this like 0 0.5 millimeter film to go in between each of the layers. And the coil that I was printing out came out, and it came out beautiful, just one problem. Um, I had made some changes to the body, and I didn't reflect that on the top. So the body is bigger than the top. Something else, too, which may end up being an issue later on. I printed it using concentric infill which is just this series of round circles for the infill and the walls a little bit flimsy it should be okay once I I think if I wind it properly it'll be all right but I'm printing out a new top and of course this Ender does a fantastic freaking job. Oh, I, I'm so glad I got the V2. Here's my old Ender 3 Pro, which worked great for many, many years. But it eventually gave up the ghost. Um, wouldn't print anymore. I, it would, but it, was, it took too much maintenance. There was too many things I had to fix. But yeah, so while that's printing, I'll finish winding this coil. This is my office, and it is a pigsty. I went out and got one of those. 
So I'm in the Makita DeWalt Milwaukee ecosystem. I couldn't pick one. So I ended up with all three. And I've never gotten into to the Ryobi system. <clears throat> but I saw this video on this tire inflator. And I thought, and it was really inexpensive. I mean, it's Ryobi. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with Ryobi. I don't own any Ryobi tools. Simply because I've never, I never got into the ecosystem. But I figured, what the heck? It's so inexpensive and it comes with a charger and a battery. So I figured, why not? So now I'm also in the Ryobi ecosystem. And there's a couple of Ryobi tools I got my eyes on, but I haven't tried this out yet. It, it, I haven't tried it on a tire. I tried it and it and it's, appears to work great. It's got good reviews. I mean, it's Ryobi, so I didn't spend a lot. Anyway, stay tuned. So I'm still printing away. Finished the coil. Have a coat of resin on there. I printed out the core, so this is the core that's going to go in there. And that chamber, it's got a sealed bottom. That chamber is where I'm going to put <clears throat> resin and metal powder, metal filings. I have this metal powder that I've had for a while. It's iron powder. And so I'll use that. I'm also printing out some some inserts for my whoops for the side of the rotor because I don't want to use bearings in here so the shaft will go in there this will then go in there I'm printing out two more because this isn't tight enough I want it to be a snug fit and I, I usually can get it on the first try but this time so I just increased this by, what? Two tenths. Oh, and I also finished the coil, or the other side of the coil, the coil top, if you will. And the coil top, just like this one, has a little lip on it that fits down into the coil body so that when I glue it, it's got a really good or it has more area to glue on. So yeah, working on that. I turn this every so often. Even though I don't put a lot on, I still turn it. It came out okay. Not one of my better wines, but it came out okay. And so I'll put a Anyway, you don't need to hear all that stuff. Um, yeah. Hopefully tomorrow... I'm recording this. This is Sunday. I have Mondays off from work. So hopefully tomorrow we can get building. And probably in the morning... <clears throat> I'll fill the resin... Or I'll mix the resin in the iron powder and fill it into the other one that I'm printing out because again this one is just a little bit too tight it'll work but it's a little bit too tight so I I'm printing another one on the FL Sun and you can see the first layer is laying down it, it's funny because the first layer works great on small parts I think I fixed the first layer problem I think it was just a bed leveling issue even though you don't level the bed on the FL Sun you hone the top part anyway stay tuned all right really quick guys I want to show you what I'm doing here so here's the core to this Bedini coil. It's going to be an air uh, iron core. In other words, it'll have an air center, but an iron core. I was going to try to print out a solid piece out of um, iron 
infused filament, but it's not really good. Here's the iron powder that I have, highly magnetic. And I'm going to mix it with some resin and get it in here, let it harden, and put it in there. Stay tuned. So I ended up having enough to pour for three cores. I have a core for this guy, and then I poured a core for that bigger round coil. And then I had enough for one more core because I had printed out three. And I did, because it looks kind of weird they're like it's not been mixed but i did check it with a magnet at least i checked that with the magnet i gotta put a heat source on there to get rid of those bubbles i think that's what that is they're just little bubbles all right stay tuned so the torch works but i gotta be careful i almost i caught the paper on fire so this is the torch that i have pretty cool huh it's a big monster but yeah, you just go like that. And I gotta be careful with this. Yeah, see the paper catches on fire. All right, so I gotta wait for those to dry. In the meantime, I can go out and start building the new Ferris wheel motor. Stay tuned for that. All right, so I'm back in the garage. Here's my latest Ferris wheel, and here's the new one. I'm putting it together. So I was thinking, sometimes I build what I call a prototype, and then it turns out that the prototype is absolutely fine, that I don't need to build something else. In other words, this stand, this stand is absolutely fine. It works perfect for what I needed to do. I did get the new um, acrylic, or plex, no, I think it's acrylic. And so I may build another stand, but this one seems to work really well. So we'll see. Let me get this guy together. I've got the first half of the standoff. I'm calling these standoffs on. Had to do a lot of grinding. I forgot how much work it was. And I put the inserts in here. I glued the inserts in. Because I don't want to use bearings. I want to use... Oh, you know what? I just realized. Dag. I'm going to have to build another stand. Because this stand I built with <laughs> the bearings on the rotor. I mean, I could pop those out. They're just crazy glued in. Oh, damn, damn, damn. All right, time to rethink. Stay tuned. I was able to pop those out. I had just crazy glued them in. So now I realize that these standoffs are so tight that I don't need to worry about putting on end caps like I did on these here to keep them in. It looks nice, but it's unnecessary. And it looks nice and straight and square. So now I've got to fish out the barrel magnets and the barrel magnets will go in there they'll get captured and then they'll go on top of here like this so if I try to put one on oh shit shit what the hell happened I didn't make them oh, I must have miscalculated dag nabbit yeah, I either made the standoffs too big or made these too small. So, yeah, um, I don't think I can make extensions for these. Oh, boy, 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 boy. All right, let me try to figure out what I can do with that. Hmm, 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 hmm. Them standoffs are in there really tight, too. It would take a lot to get those off. I could just reprint these. How did I miscalculate that? Oh, I know what I did. I see what I did. I made 
the internal distance instead of getting the external distance because it's perfectly on the internal. Hmm. There's got to be a way I can work around this. Let me think about it. Stay tuned. I think I figured out. I'm going to try to make an adapter and I will put it in upside down on that so that it holds these guys in. They'll sit in there like that. And this end here will sit in here. And then I have the same brackets I used for the other Ferris wheel that go over this screw into here. We'll see if that'll work. Stay tuned. All right, so I think I finally honed in on the adapter. Um, I'm not going to try to explain it from here. So essentially, I need for this piece to sit up higher because I can't make an adapter that fits in there and then then and then have this sit down inside there. It has to sit up a little bit higher. And so I enclosed this area here to enclose the entire end there. And it will sit up higher and then this end will sit inside there and then have that um, that other retainer piece that I made for the other Ferris wheel motor. It's taken me several of these to figure this out. I'm printing one now, but not like this. I'm still trying to figure out how to print this. Anyway, stay tuned. All right, so if we do the math, <clears throat> and I have to print out these. I've got to print out 16 of these, which also means... It's an extra piece that's on there, which also means I've got to either enclose this or build another brace over the top of it, or I can just print out eight new standoffs, which literally take 15 minutes each on the FL Sun. Yeah, we're going with the new standoffs. Stay tuned. <clears throat> well, my friends, I'm still printing out the standoffs. I got one done, and you can see how they are the right size. These actually sit in, sit in like this. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get this thing built today and running. So instead, I'll show you a new toy I got. This thing is really cool. So one of the things I hate the most about um, making coils, and it's more of a luxury problem, is um, stripping the wire. Normally I just throw a, um, a torch to it and then get the old uh, sandpaper and sand it. This guy is really cool. I just did this wire here. And it strips it really cool. What it does is it grabs the wire. Let me see if I can... Let me straighten it out a little bit. It doesn't even really need to be straight. So you just put it in. And for thicker wire, there's a speed control down here. And so for thicker wire, they say do a higher speed. I don't see it necessary. I just keep it on the low speed. And you put it in there... And it grabs the wire. And it strips it beautifully. I mean, look at that. That is freaking sweet. Now, I haven't tried it on thinner wire yet. So let's see how that works. Oops. I got to get you guys into the camera. Yeah, it works on thinner wire, too. It just got to be careful, though. It spits out some of the thinner wire. But it works. It works freaking great. And then you undo this thing. 
I don't know how it comes off. I thought it just unscrewed. I think it unscrews. Anyway, you take that off and you dump the stuff out. I have to figure out how to... I don't know if it just continues to unscrew. Anyway. Yeah, you can see there are these little teeth there. And when it spins, the teeth collapse. So if I go like this, I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, the teeth collapsing. Anyway, it works great. I love it. And it costs nothing. I think I got it on, I don't know if I got it on AliExpress or Banggood. But it definitely, definitely came from China. And you know, I don't know how long it's going to last, but it works good. But again, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this guy built today. It'll take, if I print four standoffs at a time, it takes an hour. It's almost 5.30 here Pacific time. So I think what we're going to do, I'm going to cut these off. I'm going to put a piece of plastic here. I have to get some more um, wire uh, things, you know, those little things for the wire. <laughs> I forget what they're called. Wire nuts, not wire nuts. Wire connectors. I got to get some more wire connectors. And, oh, yeah, I was able to pop out. I think I said that before. I was able to pop those guys out. They were just crazy glued in. So, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this guy built today as much as I wanted to. I hate making videos for you guys. Well, I do a lousy job anyway, but I hate not being able to show a finished product. But that's just the way it is sometimes. So... Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Two down, six more standoffs to go. That's what's really good about this FL Sun is the speed. And it really does round stuff well. Does it well? Does it fast? Does it accurate? <clears throat> Doesn't like to do squares simply because of the Delta design but it works really well on round stuff. So yeah, square, round. These guys are still drying. I made a mistake and touched one, they're still tacky. But yeah, I'm gonna print out two more by themselves and I'm gonna print out four at one time. And I, again, I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to put it together tonight, cause yeah. Anyway, <laughs> once again, thanks for watching. Ciao.